Get your fatwa custom made today, the way you want it, with the ruling you want, for just $19.99. That's right, just $19.99 at scholarsfordollars.com. Apply now and get two fatwas for the price of one. That's right, two fatwas for just $19.99. This is a limited offer. Terms and conditions may apply. Well, we might find something like this to be hilarious, to be funny. The reality is the political stances that we see from the scholars in the days that we live in is far from being funny. In fact, the reality is, is that people no longer trust the scholars because of the political stance that we're seeing from individuals today. And this is scary. When people turn away from their scholars, this is when the people go astray. This is when the doors for shaitan open. Even when we look just a couple years back, those who fell into extremism and went away, why? Because they went away from the scholars. But obviously when we see these type of stances, we have to be realistic. When we see these type of weak political stances and stances which are not just, I'm talking about weak politically, but things that clearly go against what Islam is. It clearly goes against the way of Islam. So what do we do in this situation? How do we know what is correct and what is not? And what stance we should make? We go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Because obviously it's confusing. We don't know what to do. We go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. Allah told us very clearly, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ To ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. But here we're saying <laughs> that the people now have become, these scholars have become scholars for dollars as people were saying. And this, by the way, I don't think it's any, the best way to talk about the scholars, scholars for dollars. And we go back to what our scholars said and how they divided the scholars. That's what I want to share with you tonight. That the reality is, is that the scholars, there's three different types of scholars. And once we understand this, and we understand the fatwas that are passed, we understand which type of scholar they are. And this is from the explanation of Riyadh al-Salihin, our Shaykh, Shaykh al Muthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala. It's one of the real scholars. When we say, go back to the scholars, you go back to the real scholars, the likes of Shaykh al Muthaymin, rahimahullah ali. Shaykh al Muthaymin, rahimahullah, he said that the scholars are three different types. There's three different types of scholars. He divided them into three categories. He said the scholar of the milla, the scholar of the religion, and we're gonna explain each one of them. The first one is the scholar of the milla, the scholar of the religion. And the second one, he said, it's the scholar of the dola, the scholar of the state. And the third one, the scholar of the ummah, meaning the people scholar. So these are the three categories of scholars. He said that the first one, the scholar of the milla, the scholar of the religion, let me read to you exactly what he said. He said that this is the one who spreads the religion of Islam and they give the fatwa in regards to the religion of Islam through knowledge, which is based on the Quran and Sunnah. They give it through this knowledge and they do not care if the law and the, uh, the, the, the Sharia that they pass is not in accordance to the desires of the people or not. They're not concerned with what the people say. This is what the Quran and Sunnah said. This is the fatwa they give and this is how they spread Islam. This is the first category of scholars. The second category of scholars, he said, they are the scholars of the state, the ulama ad dola And he said, these ulama, these scholars, these are the ones who, the one who acts looking for that which the state wants. He sees what the state wants, and he gives fatwa in accordance to that. And he said, even if it contradicts the book of Allah and the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third category, he said, in regards to the scholar of the nation, the one who are the people scholars, he said that he is the one. They looked at that which pleases the people. They look at that which pleases the people. And if they see they are upon something particular, then they will use a fatwa that pleases them in, in, in this issue. And he tries to falsify the evidence from the Quran and from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that it will agree, that it will agree with the desires of the people. So these are the three categories of the scholars. Why is it important that we understand this when we see some of these fatwas now and we're hearing people keep contacting us, we're hearing on social media about, we said, the political fatwas that we're hearing now, which is, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's really ununderstanding, uh, ununderstandable how uh, people can, can be saying the things that they are from these scholars. And as a, and people who, who try to adhere to the way of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, we know that speaking out against the rulers and rebelling against the rulers is not the way of the Salaf, it's not the way of our pious predecessors. And however, at the same time, to come and praise people and to make fatwas 
which is not according to Islam or not correct as well, and to supporting falsehood, this is also not the way of the Salaf as well. The point is, is that when we see these type of fatwas, we look and we see which category that the people fall into. So the ones who are passing, obviously, any false or incorrect political fatwas, we know that they fall into being the scholar of the state. The ones who are passing fatwas, which are things that are clearly haram, and this is something I mean, we see all throughout history, and there's nothing new even in the days we live in. The ones who are, and that's what they call the scholars for dollars, the ones who are the people's scholars or the people for, or for the state or whatever, that the people who are the scholars of the people who want to please the people, the ones who want to get more following on social media, the ones who want to, uh, you know, appeal to the people. So they'll, 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 they'll mix up the things and they'll, and they'll issue fatwas in order to please the people and to get more following and sometimes to get some money in return, people that will support them because they give the fatwas they want. So these two type of scholars, obviously, are the ones we're not going to take from. And the ones we need to focus on are the scholars of the millah, the scholars of the religion, who pass their fatwa and who spread Islam, as the Sheikh said, rahimahullah ta'ala, in, uh, in accordance to the Quran and Sunnah, even if it's not appealing to the desires of the people, even if it's not appealing to the de desires of the state which they live in, this is the way of the scholars. And the scholars, and, and Sheikh Nuthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said at the end, when he, when he divided them into three categories, he said, Nas'alallah. He said, may Allah make us from the scholars of the millah, the scholars of the religion, and those who act upon it, who act upon their religion. And we say, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from uh, those scholars and make us from those who, who adhere to that and to call to that and who follow our scholars, who are the serious scholars, inshallah ta'ala. As we said, understanding this, it will, it will help us to be able to know where these scholars fall, which are the categories that we fall into. And it's very important as well that we don't paint all of our scholars with the same brush because of the mistakes that other scholars make, because they could be either scholar of the state or a scholar of the people, and they're not from the true scholars. And subhanAllah, what this, this has proven to us, and we need to understand as well from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah throughout the history of mankind and throughout the history of Islam, we have different tests, different calamities that come to us to see what is our stance going to be. What is our stance going to be? And we see that these scholars today who have issued these ridiculous fatwas, may Allah guide them, that they are people who have failed the test. Many of them who have millions of followers on social media and we thought that they were true scholars and they were you know, people who are upon good and upon the way of the Salaf of our, of our early pious predecessors of this Ummah, that in reality, they were just du'at. They were just du'at who were calling to some khair, but they were weak when it came to certain stances. And when I say weak, what I want to say is that it, this doesn't mean you have to speak out against the rulers. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to speak out against the batil because sometimes it might just be better to stay quiet because it's, 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 it's safer for yourself. It's safer for the, for the ummah. And we know even from the seerah, there's certain times of weakness, times of strength. So you might not say anything. And this is what you need to do. These scholars, if they were true scholars, if you can't say what is, what is haq, if you can't speak against certain evil, then at least remain quiet. But to come and to support evil and, and, and give fatwas to, to support evil and to support that which is wrong, this is the issue here. The point is, my brothers and sisters, we don't paint all of our scholars with the same brush. And we realize that many of those who claim to be following the likes of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Imam Ahmed, and Ahmed ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, that they're far from that. Because the ones who follow those scholars, you'll see that they were willing. They were willing to what? To stand up against that which is falsehood and to stand for that which is truth, even if it meant them going to prison or facing difficulties. And here I want to point out as well that even though throughout history many of the scholars went to prison, and they, that doesn't mean necessarily that to be a scholar of the haqq, to be a scholar of the millah, that you have to go to prison. Like we said, it could just be that you're quiet at a certain time. And many of the people, many of the great scholars, even during the time of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, when the issue of khalq al-Qur'an came, that Imam Ahmed stood up and he spoke out. Other scholars who supported him, they remained silent. And if we have nothing good as believers to say, as we know, we should we say good or remain silent as our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. And this is what I want to share with you, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the scholars are one of three, as Shaykh Nuthin mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that they're either the scholars of the Millah, the scholars of the religion, or they're the scholars of the Dawla, of the state, or the scholars of the people. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us from those who act and follow the scholars of the religion and make us from them, make us die upon that, Ya Rabbil Alameen.